Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and I thought I would put together a quick tutorial video for Mountain Core. A fun little game has just come out, and I've got a series running on this game otherwise, but this would be more of a standalone video just for setting up a, a good start, getting new players uh, uh, exposure to how the game works and what to what to do in their, their first uh, attempts at playing it. Let's grab a new game. Well, first of all, join the discord yeah you know, i don't know if you if you spend much time on discord i usually don't but this one game i went ahead and ventured into there and it's an active dev team that is putting this together and there's someone on there most all the time to answer questions you can see what bugs are being worked on at the moment what future plans are for the game how it's going to grow there's a lot there uh new game small is perfect for the purpose of this particular video um, large you've got to have a pretty good graphics card and operating system to to handle this otherwise you get a lot of stutter there's still a lot of uh, uh, work to do to really make things more efficient so go ahead and do it if you're patient medium works really well for me that's where I usually set it at small is gonna work for this one you can randomize the name and the Diamond King. <laughs> Stone Axe, sure, we'll go with that one. You can randomize the seed. For this video, it doesn't matter what the seed is. I'm actually going to probably start several times till I get a map that looks like it'll do a good job of explaining how best to play. So it won't necessarily be this seed. But I'll find something that gives us a good variety of Oh, the features that are available, because there are a lot of features available. There's a lot. There are maps with mostly mountain. There are maps with mostly, you know, grassland and forest. There are maps that, oh, look like like Mordor from uh, is that the right name from uh, Lord of the Rings with you know the, the mountain with the lava they had to throw the ring into. It was just all desolate and nothing living. I came across one map and man, it reminded me of that. I I wouldn't want to even play that one but it's just a random roll there are mushroom forests there are uh caves caverns there's lots of possibilities here let's see what we get okay so i'll let you guys pause and read this if you want to i've already done that in the other series i just want to concentrate on how to start the game so um what you're looking for for a good start for a, an easy start for your first run is mountain that is somewhat near river now do be careful if it gets too narrow there was one game where I started you tell the game where you want to start and hit begin and it dropped all the carts right here and completely blocked it put all the dwarves over here they couldn't get through to here I had to mind, mind my way around it so do give yourself a good open area to uh, to start it but let's take a look at this map I see we have a bit of a cave we've got mushrooms which means easy food for the very beginning you harvest the mushrooms you get mushrooms to eat and you get spores to create mushroom logs later um, We've got, gem, well, it's not going to let me click on it at this point. It's waiting to start. We've got gems. We've got, that is coal. You want to be near coal and you want to be near metal. In this case, there is iron for metal. Um, what else is around here? Some more coal up in here. Ooh, it's like a mushroom force hiding up over here. That's interesting. More iron, more probably silver and coal and these are all gems all these little round things in it lots of gems through here and a mushroom forest that's actually pretty rare i rarely ever see that um over here what are you you may be silver as well Ooh, another cavern with lots of mushroom trees and mushrooms and boy this is a big cavern do be aware of caverns though caverns quite often have monsters and you're starting off as some little baby dwarves they they don't they can brawl they can throw a fist they don't know how to use weapons yet you still got to train them so venture into there sparingly if you're 
at the beginning you know if you're just starting a game stay away from there and just get yourself established first then kind of sneak in and take a peek it's quite possible that caves that are available right at the beginning will not have monsters but when you do start digging in and you break through into another cavern those quite often are inhabited but let's do this let's let's call this map good we can build bridges to get across to get over to this land over here so that we can get to this coal if we needed to a small map's not going to give you a lot of mountain but actually there's enough mountain there to do anything that we would need to do so medium maps are my favorite they, they tend to be a good balance in between so let's start these guys oh kind of over here i want to keep the the grassland near the river available it's going to drop four wagons on us with these seven dwarves and they're going to kind of be in the way so let's dump them if i put it in the trees i wonder what will happen i wonder if it will accidentally spawn into a tree let's go for like right over here we'll say put us there please there we go so we've got seven dwarves spread them out a little bit one two three four five six seven these dwarves have the potential of all of these different professions you can choose up to three professions for each dwarf they come skilled already in some villager is just more of a generic profession that usually means hauler so there's your, your haulers from banished otherwise you've got chefs blacksmiths carpenters farmers weavers woodcutters miners stonemasons brewers fishers leather workers artisans and then, then our villagers you click on these it'll tell you who how many of each you actually have we have one blacksmith we have two carpenters we have no chefs so we need to fix that we have only one farmer right now that's not good we have no weavers we have one woodcutter we could use another one of those um, woodcutters and miners i tend to double up on they either do one or the other they're they're constantly busy doing that let's make this woodcutter also a miner by clicking on that middle one and choosing miner so now this one will woodcut really well or when there's no trees to take down they'll go they'll go and and uh, bang on the rocks a little bit um stone masons we've got plenty so let's have a stone mason also be a miner that gives us three miners now it'd be nice to find somebody else to be a well we need a chef we need a fisher and we need more woodcutters don't need artisans right now so let's go back to this list here who here we go we've got slots available to us let's make you a woodcutter uh, right there and when you're not cutting wood why don't you learn how to be a chef and you can be our fisher we'll get more into that later but that kind of distributes some of the well there are only certain jobs that are done the first year you're not going to get into artisan typically leather worker you might if you start hunting early but usually that's a later thing you you, you start farming first thing you don't get into brewery or baking for for quite a while there's a lot to do to make those work so there are certain jobs that uh probably won't happen at first your first wave of immigration next spring here we're spring day one will likely bring in people with those second tier job skills already built into them so don't have to worry too much about some of those um, so we need to set up farms we need to set up a place to sleep we need to set up um, oh, a few things some some mining some chopping we need to get some wood coming in so let's set up some jobs we've got orders over here we can mine we can chop we can clear which means get rid of the bushes there we go or we can extinguish fires which are a thing here we do get lightning and we are dealing with a lot of fire inducing uh workbenches like forges and smelters and things like that so sparks happen be ready for it um they do take a drink and want something to eat at least morning and evening and if you're in a map where you are a long way away from water it becomes a long walk twice a day to go get a drink so one of the first things that i do is kind of a tip for you whichever map you end up starting on the kitchen and we'll get more into these rooms here in a little bit but the kitchen in particular has a water barrel in it 
Rooms work by setting up a space and then building these, these furniture pieces into them. In which case, you'd set up your butcher top to butcher animals or fish. Your kitchen worktop prepares meals that are cooked in cauldrons and sent out to the the dining room which also has a space for a cauldron so they take the kitchen cauldron to the dining space and drop it off there and then they'll grab meals and sit at the table and eat and then they'll take that cauldron back to the kitchen you can set all of these into your kitchen space wherever that happens to be when you're done but right now this water bar barrel is the most important that will get filled up and then they'll all come to that to drink if it's closer to them than the river. In this case I picked a map where the river is pretty close so it's not that big of a deal but it would be, let's see, can I? I wonder if I can make everything go away by doing that. I cannot. Okay, one at a time. But that's a, just a quick example of how that works. I always set up a water barrel right at the beginning near where we're going to be spending a lot of time. And we may as well take advantage of this cave. There's some mushrooms to clear, which is another way of saying harvest. So we'll harvest these. And heads up, there is at least one kind of mushroom in this game that you don't want them to eat. So don't even harvest them. I don't know of a way to forbid certain things from the game. So if you harvest it, it's going to end up in a soup. I won't tell you which one it is. But read the names. Will this tell me names? This will. This one is a Miltonia mushroom. This one is a purple helmet mushroom. Those are okay. If you find one that has a name like this will kill you or <laughs> die if you eat this, you know, just take pay attention to the little details. They're there for a reason. So um anyway, so what was I talking about? Water barrels. So we're gonna concentrate in here. I think is a good starting place so in here like right there let's set up a quick little room with a kitchen just need a one by one space and in that one by one space we're going to put a water barrel and we're going to click on it and say i want this to be the highest priority and someone's going to go get it out of there you are on this this wagon over here haul it over and put it in that space and if you click again to get back to the kitchen, you can tell the kitchen itself that whatever is in your kitchen, I want you to be the highest priority. They should obey that when the barrel arrives to make it a high priority to keep filling it back up again. So it, the problem with the priority system is that if everything is high priority, then nothing is high priority because it's all high priority. So it doesn't really do any good. So be careful about that. Use it sparingly. Um, we want to set up orders for some chopping. We need we need lots of wood. The trees will regrow in spaces you've taken other trees out if you give them time. So don't clear cut everything. I don't know if they will regrow then. At least I've never tried it. I What I have found is that if you go through and take out every other one, then it will, in the space where they were, it will tend to drop seedlings and start growing other trees in their place so slowly but surely you can kind of rebuild a forest afterward so all the trees are different they all produce different wood this is an oak tree we've got rosewood tree it gives you a red wood oak tree gives you more of a yellowish brown wood um, you are rosewood as well any other examples on this map oh, what are you guys We've got a red emperor tree over here, and a red cedar tree, and a star pine tree. Lots of different kinds of wood, lots of different kinds of stone, a shale rock wall. We've got over here the jasper gems, bituminous coal. That's always hard for me to read. Um, right there, oh, unexplored, so it won't let you go more than one space in. Uh, rock crystal, jasper opals. So there's lots of gems and lots of metals. We've got here our coal. We've got here our hematite, which makes iron. And right here we were questioning it. Yeah, that is native silver. And elephants. I haven't figured out the elephants part. But if you go hunting, don't hunt an elephant. They'll just stomp you. Don't even try. <laughs> stick to deer or stick to fishing. 
Okay, so we've chopped down some, or we've given orders to chop down some trees. I like to leave the game pause and set up all the initial orders. The first day and the first season goes by pretty quick, and there's a lot that you really need to try to accomplish in that first season if you're going to have a successful first year. Otherwise, you're going to be limping along, praying you make it through the winter to that second year where you can try again. Sometimes you don't get that second chance. There are starvation death spirals in a game like this. Um, so chopping, I mean, ore, uh, mining, that's the word I'm looking for. There, we're going to need stones. We're going to need to start making blocks. So let's, for starts, let's start mining some of the more interesting pieces in here. This whole area could go. Yeah, there's a bunch of hematite in here, which means we've got a bunch of, of uh, ore. For metal there's our barrel okay this is the opening now the roof will support three away from a stable wall if you were to build a wall in place of a stable wall that would then be a stable wall so you could go through and build walls in here to support spaces but three away which means from the other side another three so it gives you a six you can mine through the place six by whatever you want and it will be stable as soon as you hit seven by something beyond six then this will collapse so a seven by seven is a death trap don't do it six is as far as you want to go and then you could carefully mine out maybe a space right there and then go into construction build and grab a pillar and once they mine that spot drop a pillar in there and then you should be able to get another six in all directions that pillar should then be the center of I think it would be maybe the pillar should be here well, we'll say a 12 by 12 in that case if you got one in the middle it still gives you it kind of counts as your stable wall for your six by six so I haven't tried it I haven't gone through and cleared out large-scale things I've kept all of my rooms to six by so I've never had to find out the hard way if I was completely wrong about that but in this case three by I see we have one extra wall right over in here I think I'll leave that we'll cut this out and or actually tell you what let's do this um cancel you guys let's leave i think you by now you would have noticed the light on your mouse this is really a nice little feature so you can see what's inside if i leave this wall here then i can go this way yeah in that case i can mine out from here and here so from this wall that's three by from this wall that's three by I can go all the way out to a six by six and these walls here will hold everything so I can take that whole corner out now and so that gives us some stones potentially there's a chance that each of these will produce a stone or not produce a stone so I want to get into the mountain a little bit just because it provides a natural roof and it's kind of a nice feature when you're building or your little rooms your little work areas to put in your carpenter shop and your sawmill and whatnot rather than having to put a roof over them let's let the mountain do most of that job for us so so i'm kind of digging into the mountain to do this work and there's three by there so we'll do that we'll chop into there and shear it off like that okay so there's some area to actually we can get into here too so let's leave like these two so don't have to worry about the three by problem and we'll dig in like that sure that'll work okay so that gives the miners something to do it gives the woodcutters something to do let's give the farmers something to do now we have in this game the concept of water and power we have irrigation channels that we can dig that will move water to your gardens somewhere else and unfortunately I wish it would but it isn't attached to the river so I can't dig an irrigation channel straight up into the river and have the river flow and fill it you've got to use a water pump which is not going to build immediately because there's parts in there that we just don't have we have to have a little more advanced level workshops in place to create the I can't, or can I move? Yeah, the gears down here come out of the artisan shop. So but we could drop in a pump and then we could attach basically rotating shafts to that pump over to a 
water wheel eventually and that will power the pump or this windmill could power the pump or other items other machinery in the game that's all going to happen year two or year three right now you're pretty much at the mercy of what you have access to it takes a long time to get to this this is later you know uh, more advanced level construction over here so pipes will move the water from that water pump to the irrigation channel so you can be irrigating you know down in if these trees weren't here down in here with pipes moving all the way up to your pump if that was the case but let's clear these out but when you put in the irrigation channels what i'm trying to get to is that the water or the moisture will flow for one two three spaces away there is a little shortcut you can do for a new game, a new player just wanting to get a feel for it, is you could create your farms within three of a water source, just like your irrigation channel. These three spaces here will be irrigated so that they will grow twice as fast as without. Um, let's grab... Let's go up in here. That way we can get these guys vertical. So let's put a farm plot in from here to here. We'll make it 18 so I can get access to these seeds. The carrots grow, can be planted spring, summer, and autumn. Anything that can be planted in the autumn will survive the winter without being destroyed by the frost. So carrots, corn can only be planted in the spring. And without irrigation, when you're depending only on the rain, quite often they don't make it. You get right to the end of autumn and they haven't got to 100% yet and then the snow comes and kills off a whole field full of corn and it was a waste. If it's irrigated, or in our case we're going to put it right near the river which makes it irrigated, then it should grow at a much higher rate and it should make it. We got 18 seeds. What did I say this was? I don't remember. There we go. 3 by 6 that's 18. Let's make you corn. There we go. So that one's corn keep the plus going we can add more if we add another garden and it touches that one it will become a cornfield they do have to have a separation in between that is a four by five we need three buys so corn needs the extra time or irrigation hemp and hops do also they won't grow within one within the growing season they need the help of irrigation channels or alongside the river. So hops and hemp. And the other one is tomatoes. In real life, they grow pretty quick. But in this game, they don't quite make it. And winter will kill them off. So get your tomatoes and your corn near water. And your hops and hemp. So the H's, the C, and the T. Alright, so let's do an 8 for hemp. So right in here, a 3x3 three that will be fine. Your hemp. Let's do hops of a 12, so a 3 by 4, but only 3 wide from the river, so don't do a 4 by 3, but a 3 by 4. Right there, that can be hops. And the tomatoes, we've got 18 of those, so a 3 by 6. Let's do something like that. You guys will be tomatoes. Now the carrots go well, so we don't have to do that trick for this they will still make it though they would grow faster and you would get food sooner so in that case maybe the tomatoes at least would be worth it so let's think about that actually let's do this let's put it in partially near the water and partially not I can go there without connecting and then we'll come out to three and I don't even know how many that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve well ten eleven that one doesn't count either. That's four away. So there's 10. We've got carrots, we've got 20. So we'll add in a bunch more. These are not going to get the benefit of being constantly watered. So we should see half of this harvest sooner than the other half. And what have I got there? That's a 5x5, five five, so 25. Looks like I can clip off with the negative, the minus there, some of it. That might be enough. We'll see how well that plants. And now your wheat and your barley, they plant in the spring and autumn. So if it's autumn, it'll make it through the winter, even if it doesn't finish growing. So you've heard of winter wheat. You know, it, it can survive the cold. So I'm going to make a, oh, a barley field 16. So let's put in plus 
over here, uh, there's a 15 plus 1. So there's a 16 will make you barley. There's 12 wheat seeds. That's what we arrived with. So let's go up in here. I put in a 3 by 4. There's 12. You are wheat. Potatoes, I don't think we did potatoes yet. So potatoes, we need a 16. That's a 4 by 4, but let's stick with our... Yeah, this kind of works. There's... Where am I? Potatoes, 16. There's 15, 16. Now, if we were doing this, you know, a long way away from the water and we're depending on irrigation, I would do something like this instead. I would set up, say, a 3 by 6. There's our 18 for our corn. Then I would set up irrigation through here and then another farm of 3 by 6. The irrigation can do three blocks to either side. Then you can do a space and then do another farm and irrigation and another farm. Then you can set your irrigation up as that's not it right there so we could irrigate you know down like so over to the next farm you know garden and then up between this one and this one and and kind of create a network of irrigation if we wanted to and then you'd set your pipes up to it and then go to your water pump and it would start to fill and, and it would water everything around so you can create these nice grids for your gardening if you're going to go that route can i kill all of this this way nice okay so no it didn't <laughs> okay let's let's there we go minus that will get rid of all those okay so our gardens for this map are up in here we're going to take advantage of the river as much as possible the other series that i'm doing we were much further away from the river so we set up a different way of doing that okay so now we have jobs for the miners we have jobs for the carpenters we have jobs for the farmers we have gone through our settlers we have a decent amount of those important first jobs the miners the woodcutters and the farmers no we need more farmers okay so one person trying to plant all of that means we're never going to get them planted in fact it wouldn't hurt at the very beginning you know let's let's think about that let's make a temporary burst of farmers so we don't necessarily need three miners right now we really don't so one of these miners can go away and you can become a farmer directly i was going to say let's take the villager tab out and make them farmers but we really don't need that many miners and how many woodcutters do we have two so we'll hang on to the two woodcutters we'll hang on to the two miners so who's left so you are a farmer you are a farmer already you could be a farmer just to get us by at the beginning and we will save our miner you could be a farmer and we'll save our woodcutter okay so there's now four farmers and they'll kind of divvy up their time between all the different tasks they're not going to be farming the entire time unless there's no other job to do which in this case really there isn't we don't have a stonemason area set up yet we don't have a carpenter's bench set up yet so the only thing to do is to farm or haul so in that case these guys will probably farm the whole time so now we have farmers and things are pretty well evenly distributed so we'll get that going um we talked about it did we do it we did and you are the highest priority so priority this guy right over here will show us all the jobs i'll let you read that and hit hit pause if you want to um all of the jobs that are queued up so far we get to choose which ones are the most important if there were trees in our farming area then i would definitely click on those to get those trees chopped down first so we can get these the, all this this ground tilled and get seeds in the ground otherwise there aren't any really truly important jobs to get done other than that i would really like to get going on a you know, i'm going to cancel that group right there leave that outer wall it just it feels right in fact if i do that i think i can take these out let's see if i can figure out what i was just talking about i want to get to the uh the the workshops going let's go a little bit deeper with this i'm just kind of envisioning what's going to actually go here yeah we're still three deep all the way through except for there but this wall here adds some side support so we're still okay if this was gone then these two would collapse but these guys are going to grant us three in the other direction as well. So 
we're going to be okay out to a six by in this area so i think we're fine there but i'm thinking the stone area right here the, ma the stone mason and the ore crushing can be over here and maybe down in here will be wood you know the, the sawmill and the carpenter down in this area I like that. So with that, back to the priority tool. Let's get this guy done first so we can get stone going. So we'll tell the miners, concentrate on mining over here first. Any hauler that's not doing anything else will concentrate on this one because that's where its priority is. And any woodcutters, if there was any particular reason to say, I really need this or that tree done first, let's get, that didn't work, priority and then choose your priority first. Let's get that one done so we can see our cart first. Sure, that's that's a good enough reason. Yeah. <laughs> but pr that's how the priority tool works. Make everything the highest priority and nothing is a high, a high priority at all. In fact, it's, it wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of go through and just carpet everything at as a low priority so that specific ones that pop into normal are actually the important ones rather than relying on everything being the highest priority but you figure out your own system on how to make that work a lot of jobs that auto reset are all going to auto reset at normal so if those are really important jobs you don't want to keep babysitting it then make everything else at lower that way this becomes high that's one tactic to use. But I think we've got everything set up enough to get this going. So let's turn it on and see what they do. So you guys are going to kind of walk around, take a breath, and then the game's going to say, Oh, oh, okay, I need a farmer. And off they go. I need a woodcutter. Oh, I need someone to haul this barrel. And it's working. It's They're doing what this should be doing. They went to the carts the the wagons. They got some tools. She picked up a, an axe, picked up a pickaxe so a a wood axe and a pickaxe are already going the cart was right here so two spaces so whoever is the other miner is probably going to swap between farming and mining or something we'll see it changes we'll see how that works but you drop that in place and because the kitchen <clears throat> is at a highest priority the barrel reset itself as a highest priority to be filled somebody's going to get the command to walk down over here and here there and find a bucket i'm curious can we see if the buckets are already being queued up we can't okay maybe later on we'll get to see that but you are transferring usually that means we're filling from water water from the river to water in the barrel usually that's what transferring means it means you're going to go pick up a bucket <clears throat> you're going to head over to the river and fill it up and then head over here and fill this so that gives us a second place to drink besides the river i'm going to pause because again i want to get a lot of things done this first day uh the miners are already telling us hey we're working on these next and the farmers are already telling us, nope, if they're working on a bush, it'll flash. Otherwise, it won't. Um, we have a tree that's being worked on next right over there. So it'll flash at you to let you know what's being worked on, which is a nice feature. Um, I want to give them a place to sleep so that when it gets dark and surprises us and happens sooner than we realize, they didn't all just collapse outside. Though this isn't really what it looks like i'll explain that in a moment bedroom let's just set up like our temporary kitchen with a temporary water barrel let's just set up a temporary bedroom we have seven drawers so there's six and one more there's seven spaces for sleeping spots which aren't really beds it's the same thing as sleeping on the ground but it gives you a way to say guys sleep over here so at least they're not sleeping out in the rain which they will just, they'll, they'll do their last command and then just kind of fall over. <laughs> That's where I'm sleeping tonight. So this gets them out of the rain. I think rain is a negative. They do have a happiness system right now. Everyone's got a plus 40 because it's, they're you know, optimistic about their new settlement. But that will gradually be eroded and chipped away real quick. Um, so this gives them a place to sleep. The sleeping spots auto build. They don't have to go and build it like they had to this one. And we should have a water bucket hauling in here soon. There it is. So Colden is hauling in. He's our journeyman farmer. Hauling in a bucket of water to fill this up. Which 
Oh, I thought that said fish barrel. That that spooked me. There is a fish barrel and there's a water barrel. You don't want to put in the fish barrel where you're going to be drinking. So we now have two waters available. I think that means two drinks available, but we'll see. Someone else will get the order to grab that and go do it again. We do have the concept of stockpiles and I use them very sparingly at first because stockpiles can sometimes hold your items hostage. I don't want to, I won't demonstrate that just yet, but basically once you set up a stockpile that is oh, like a product stockpile, for instance, we'll put one in right here, just as a sample. What I want to do with it is I want to give them a place to permanently put this water bucket when they're done, so it's always near the water barrel. Later we'll do that wherever we're going to set up the kitchen. But in the a stockpile which you can rename anything that you want you have settings and you can choose what goes in there this is a product stockpile so it automatically gives us all the products barrel barrel hoops staves buckets cauldrons chest we'll, we'll choose buckets in fact we'll turn everything off and choose buckets at the highest priority so the buckets get put there uh, leather linen tanks millstones rope gear pipes water skins ingots plates planks blocks and for those of you who have never played this game before, I just read off a list of a foreign language to you, I know. This all makes sense later. I've never made a water skin, so there's some things that uh, are later on in the game. But planks are your boards that are made from logs. Blocks are your stones that are made from boulders. And you come with a... Come on, get over there. There we go. With a pile of planks and blocks and ingots or metal and plates and if you set up a big stockpile right at the very beginning and say you know a product stockpile the game is going to say all right all of you guys are flagged to go into that stockpile and those items are now not going to be available to build whatever you're going to build like the the stone mason we're going to put in here because the stockpile has is, is already got a hold of it. And it's given each of those an order, move to the stockpile. So now we're waiting for the dwarves to go pick up that item, bring it over to the stockpile and drop it off. Once that's satisfied, then it's free and available to go to the stonemason's bench. We can shortcut that extra step by not putting in a stockpile at the very beginning. Let's just let them take it from the wagon directly to it. Nothing is calling for it. It's free. It's available. Just got to go get it. So I haven't started the game doing that yet. I want to do that this time and see if it works the way that I assume that it will. But I want to get this space cleared out here. For that matter, let's just clear out part of that. So um, normal for that space there there's just two wives that's quick and let's get the area set up for the carpenter area right here so that'll be our next mining area okay so let's mine these then mine those have we been dropping logs we have we have lots of logs and we could set up a raw material stockpile now that one we could get away with without that issue so much although some of the initial um buildings that we're going to put in do call directly for logs i'll wait on that let's get let's get these set up we'll get into our second day and then think about that but we have nighttime coming soon we're already at three in the afternoon day one year one perfect weather spring <clears throat> planting we are planting so the tomato plants are mostly in. There's two seeds left and one, two spaces left. So we got that one right. So we've got Asta, a journeyman stonemason who is temporarily filling in as a farmer and is already skilled up to level six. That's, there's our levels down here. Well, that's kind of nice. He's doing a good job. Um, we've got to take some bushes out. We're still clearing land over here. We've got more seeds to plant. Now, I have not dealt with irrigated soils before, so I don't exactly know how that works. I wonder if there is a darker soil. doesn't look... Well, my imagination says that 1, 2, 3 is a little darker than 4, but it might just be me reading that into it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll get a little further into that. We are at 6 p.m. We've got all of this already... Uh, um, mind out of here let's pause the game for a while and set something up so we've got rooms 
in these rooms we can set up our smithy our smeltery our sawmill you can go through and read all these all the different uh, uh, workstations or workshops to to run the game the important one at the beginning is your sawmill to make more planks before you use them all up your masonry workshop to make more stones before you use them all up and your carpentry workshop which builds the fishing pole to start bringing in food and it builds the chest that you will need for your trading depot which will build probably day two or at least get it laid out um, but right here let's set up a masonry area and that will take up the whole space and we'll even go a little bit further um, set up in there the stone masons bench which we can r and rotate now not all of the graphics or images are in the game yet some items are not rotatable yet that one won't rotate so they still got to draw some more artwork and this one needs to be worked out a little bit this one doesn't open up on the right at all so there's there's something there's some improvements that are going to happen yet this guy will drop him into there this is our mason's workbench to build it we need three planks we need three boulders and not boulders with ore in them and not boulders with gems in them but just boulders we need a hammer and we need a chisel and right now if i had set up that tool stockpile and that um product stockpile these wouldn't be available to build this because the stockpile would have said all right move everything in and the orders would be to transport it so we'd have a bunch of dwarves doing a whole bunch of hauling which is kind of nice you get the, the wagons unloaded but we lose our first two or three days so that's that's the problem there's a lot that's got to get done these first few days that's why i'm doing so much pausing but at this point everything is available we have 10 stones available we have 48 planks available they wouldn't be available if they were being called to a stockpile so use your initial stockpiles very carefully and if you find that you're waiting for this guy to build and it's constantly saying there are no planks available but you know there's planks that are sitting right there then delete your stockpile and you'll find that suddenly everything frees up for you so stockpile is something that you want to put into long-term store something you're not using right now and that is an issue that it's going to be worked out eventually it's it's a core mechanic that's got to be reworked and if you know anything about coding a game if you go through and start manipulating a core mechanic you end up cascading little problems all through the game places you never dreamed they would be popping up so they're hesitant to get into that just yet and i don't blame them but this is a little workaround that i found careful with your stockpiles and if something is locked up and you can't make it move from one to another, check the stockpile. Check your priority. See if that stockpile is calling for something that is waiting. See, this stockpile is calling for that bucket. If we click on that bucket, it is assigned to product stockpile one. Product stockpile one. You're never going to be able to use a bucket again until a dwarf stops planting, picks up that bucket, and drops it off right there. So that bucket is out of commission. In this case, it's not a big deal. We have two buckets. If you go over here to the Resources tab, you can see this another way. So there's another, another uh, exposure to the game for you. Resources, everything that is in the game is represented here somehow. Buckets are a product. Products, buckets. We have two. None of them are available. Okay. That to me that makes sense to you that won't they're not available because so we can get information here but let's expand this a little bit all buckets means well all of our birch buckets well there's one of them and all of our oaken buckets because there are different levels of quality depending on who made it and the quality level of the carpenter who created it or blacksmith or whomever is working on this there's metal and wood in there so there's different they're differentiated differently their values are different based on their quality and what they're made out of so all of them or we break it down this particular birch bucket is not available because it is due for hauling now that's the birch one the oak bucket is not available because it is also due for hauling that's interesting so why would two buckets be due for hauling when there's only one space calling for it you can only set them one at a time in there. One space is currently in use. 
So that I don't know. Some at some point a dwarf is going to get. You know, usually it'll say, or I was expecting one of them to say it is reserved by bard, because bard's going to go up there and grab a bucket and transfer more water in. That's why it's not available. But anyway, that's a, just a little tutorial there on stockpiles. You, These are all available, so we can just let this thing run. So we need a stone mason's bench, but we also need input and output sources. They're called import pallets and export pallets. You want to, to bring your boulders into here, you will put in an ex, or an import pallet. So let's put import. Now, yeah, let me reverse that. Let's put an export right there. And we'll put oh, a couple of imports right there. And actually, we could do even more of them over here. We can fill this whole thing. They're meant to handle right now one type of something. So a shale rough stone. And we also have granite rough stones. So two of them would allow a shale pile and a granite pile, which could then make shale uh, blocks and another one of these would make granite blocks so you can really single out what you're looking for if you want to build a bunch of walls and you want them to all be granite you can actually tell this thing only bring in the granite ones so you can really fine-tune things but this needs to get built and let's tell these guys go ahead and jump on this now these right here mean we need to get these hauled. So let's go ahead and give them a place to haul them. They're just going to dump them all out here if we don't give them a place to go. So let's go ahead and set up a stockpile for the things that we have made, not the things that are on the wagons. That would be a raw materials stockpile. And in there we want all of the... Let's clear this out and think about it. We want all of the boulders to go there. Now we're going to have boulders that have ore. We're going to have boulders that have um, gems. The ones with gems are called uncut gems. We're going to have ore. And we're going to have rough stone boulders. That's really what we want to get hauled out of here and give them a place to go. Otherwise, like I said, they're just going to dump them all over just to get them out of this space. But logs, we can get those hauled over here. Though I'm hesitant to do that until I know that we have them available. This bench called for planks, but I think the next bench we're going to build calls for logs. So we don't want all these logs to get tied up being called to the stockpile and not be available. So I'm not going to add logs to this yet. Right now the goal is to get rid of the stones, the boulders. So especially important that this guy is calling for those boulders. The rest of the stuff we'll just kind of work our way through it as, as we find need. <clears throat> So, we have this guy called up these as well. That did it all by itself. wonder why that happened. Oh, because you are assigned to the workbench. So, the workbench, we're saying, get this done quickly. So, all of its ingredients, these three, those three, that, and that, should now all have a priority of that same priority on it, including this, probably Chisel, one of these guys, and... There's another, the planks are over here that are being called for it. So now everything we need to build this, they've all got high priorities on them. If the dwarves are going to haul anything, they're going to go haul those items first because they're the highest priority, which gets this built the quickest. So you kind of see how the priority system cascades through the game, through the materials of the game. So miners are still mining down here, which is good. We want to clear this out. Is that one marked for high priority? We just skipped it. No, let's get you marked as well. Okay, so we'll clear those out and we'll start building our carpenters and, and sawmill area over here. And just kind of get all the basics. Those are the three basic shops you need to, to worry about at the very beginning. You need a way to make uh, blocks. You need a way to make planks. And then you need a way to complete some of the tools, the initial tools that you didn't arrive with. Now it must be, yeah, we're at 2100. They're going to get their drinks, they're going to sleep. Some are getting their drinks in here because he was closer to this barrel, didn't need a drink. Okay, so they go through, I already got one. Okay, or she, she. Um, tov, tove, tov? Is it tove or tove? Um, Water and food are fine, just need sleep. 
and but morning and evening the game will reevaluate where they are and if they need it or not so that we don't go too long and these dwarves start to starve somewhere too far away from a water source so everyone's heading in they didn't just plunk their themselves down on the ground because it'll probably rain tonight on us just to just to prove it um still have seeds yep hey there it is right on cue it does rain quite a bit which is good for the the gardens the game automatically drops into four speed while nighttime as soon as the last one goes to sleep and it'll do that until the first one wakes up. So that gets you through the nighttime unless you want to manually say, no, 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 slow down. I'm working on something tonight. So get this guy done and let's set up a quick um, sawmill area so we can see how that works. Now, he hit for a long time to get that one to pop. The better skilled ones, you are a... doesn't say. No. I'm going to say it would be called a neophyte uh, miner. You are a journeyman miner as compare. You're level 50 compared to level 3. Neophyte is is the term that the, the game uses for uh, for a noob. <laughs> okay, so we've got enough of this going to set this up. Now we're going to mine further into here. We are. So let's instead do this and we'll get these guys moved out of here okay so you continue mining down here and clean up these last ones we'll start our shop from oh from i guess here out and we'll build a roof over this too so you can see how that's done okay so you guys are doing that and we've got pests in our tomatoes so that is calling for a farmer hey guys come on over here this is important can you please uh um clear the pests out of these two spaces now that's coming in a normal priority whatever you set the field for highest priority then those jobs of course they were already existing tomorrow when they when they get called in they'll come into the highest priority and the farmers will put down whatever they're doing and go deal with that which actually to me is important i set all of my fields for the highest priority because food is got to happen if i'm correct when the migrants come in in the spring so you get a a a bunch of nomads coming in if you've ever played Banish before. It's based on how much food you have left at the end of winter. <clears throat> so important that you feed them really well. Over here we've got 343 food available in our entire settlement. Among that, well actually all of it is rations which means rock bread which is actually stored on them. I keep heading down Calden has 49 rock bread on him. So he's got 49 meals available. When he runs out, he starves and the game ends. So we need to be feeding them as soon as we can so that that 49 doesn't get to zero. It's nice for them to keep a few of them on them so that when they're off hunting or doing something else during the day and they get hungry, they can stop and, and eat some food. So we want that food count to be at least 200 next spring day one to get a good migrant wave coming in um, I see that our stockpile is calling for now here's something let's do this for a moment um, give you an, another idea of how the stockpiles call items kind of take a, a note of all of our arrows we've got these arrows and those arrows scattered all around as soon as I tell this stockpile to make everything that needs to go into here a lowest priority. Now watch it prove me wrong. Let the game run. Does it change all the rocks to the lowest priority? Nope, it didn't. <laughs> In my series we did something like that and although what we were doing it for was this. Okay, let's try this another way. Let's take this bench to its lowest priority. There, I think that's going to do the job. Yeah. So by setting it to the lowest, we see that... No, I'm only seeing it in this one boulder. Interesting. In the series that I'm doing, once I did that, the logs that were 
assigned to that, the tools that were assigned to it, all transferred to that lowest priority too. But it's very possible that these are already here. Yeah, I think yeah, the boulders are here, the planks are here, the chisel's not though. The chisel is a sign, but it's not necessarily been brought, but it might be on a dwarf being carried over for all I know. Anyway, that was just a little side note that actually, you know, blew up in my face, but that's fine. <laughs> okay, what are we doing? We are working in here because we got all the important stuff done. Okay, let's set up our next room. That one is going to be the sawmill right down there. And yeah, we'll go low on that one. We don't need a lot of room. Let's do a, f let's do a three by something, and just see how this lays out. So the wood cutting bench can be right down there. So this cuts logs into planks for us. So let's get an import of uh, import for logs, and let's do a couple. We get lots of logs being brought in, and we'll do an export pallet for planks, and we'll do a couple of those as well. And we'll set all this to a higher priority just to get it all done. And that should set its tools that it needs out over here to a high priority. So that cascaded through. Now I wonder if this will let me make that demonstration. Right now take you to a lowest priority. We'll... Nope, it's not... It's not doing what I saw in my other series. That is wild. I had some... Oh, some different things that I was building and I took them down and all everything that was associated with it drop down to the same lowest priority you can see the arrows just just you know tick off all through the landscape but it's not doing it now it knows that i'm trying to prove a point yeah okay it sets you back and well you can try it on your own map and see if if i'm crazy or not we are bringing our stuff over where our blocks are over our tools are probably heading in next what are you doing now you are idling why are you idling? You have a pickaxe, and there's plenty of pickaxe work to do. I guess that was just a, a quick little thing to rethink your life. There you go. A horse is... That's our horse. Came with the wagons. He's, he's helping. Not. And you can't butcher them either, so no horse burgers, unfortunately. It doesn't matter how hungry you are. He will not let you hunt them. I did try once just to see if it was possible. Uh, we need to get this guy out of here, probably. It's probably in our way. Otherwise, you want to go help with the gardening over there. It must be one of your other job requirements. And priority, there must still be a couple of tools that need to be hauled over. So we'll let all these things happen. Now, we have lots of other jobs for them to be doing, so instead of spending their day hauling, they're actually working on farming and working on mining, so that's going to be a, uh, you know, I, I could get rid of all these jobs and probably get these moving. So we've got the <clears throat> the sawmill set up over here. We next, next we need is the carpenter. So rooms, carpenter is here, and... I'll go ahead and uh, the rooms will touch each other and not merge, unlike the stockpile. So I'll go ahead and set this up here. And I think I will drop a pillar in here to help support the roof. Actually, I could set the roof up right here. We were only, yeah, we're only five deep. So I can put a pillar right there. So the, the roof is still, just like the roof in, an, in a cavern or what you're mining out, the roofs that you build want to be three away from although in this case we are actually under the mountain so that three starts at here and goes out you can see where the rain ends so we only need a roof right through here and it's within let's go to the roof screen you can see where the rain is landing we need we need to fill in these two spaces is all and up in here we're in good shape that's why i like to build inside for my my work shops so let's fill this in with roof construction roofing and this view allows you to see which tiles are outside. You can go ahead and read that within three tiles of the wall or pillar. And let's add roof to those two spaces. It will tell us, uh-uh, if it's unsupported. So that won't work, but this is okay. We're within enough room to, to uh, be supported by the existing structure. So we'll get some roof built over here. And... Eh, we'll go ahead and kick that up. Maybe we'll get to see this actually happen. So we'll we'll do that just to make make that happen this time. Though I may not notice it. It's, it's kind of invisible. Um, so once this mining is done, then we should 
see more people working on other projects. So we're already starting to build this one. Good. You are a carpenter. Level 50. You're a good carpenter. I guess, I'm guessing the carpenter builds this as well. Now, the carpenter has a saw in his inventory. Walking up tools from the wagon by having them called over to the, the product stockpile can at times lock up all of your saws, which explains why you're waiting and waiting for these jobs to get done and they never get done because there isn't a saw available. So we happen to have three saws still available. One of them is inside somebody's pocket right over here. But so that's not a problem for us right now. But if you find that things aren't happening, track it down. Use the resources, figure out where these things are, see what they're heading toward. That one boulder was heading toward a particular stockpile or whatever. Then you can kind of backtrack and, and troubleshoot and figure things out. Um, carpenter's shop. We have a carpenter's workbench and we have input and outputs. So let's let's do this. That puts the walkway even with that space right there. So we can walk through into what we're opening up right now. And rain wise or roof wise, we are within and protected, so we don't need to worry about them. They don't like to be in the rain, so we don't have to worry about them standing out there while they're working. And some things do rust, so be aware of that. There are certain things that are made mostly of metal, and they will rust. So that's another reason to get roofs over things. So we're working on these. We are eating our rock bread. We are drinking our, our drinks. We are sleeping. We have the mason shop set up, ready to build. We have the craft or the carpentry shop mostly set up um let's go here we're going to come out of here with planks so let's drop input of planks right there we'll also need uh barrel hoops and we'll need barrel staves as inputs for this i'll show you all that later actually i think i can right now it's not built yet but it does give me the crafting icon all of your or most of your benches are going to have this and this will help explain what each bench does something that it took me a while to figure out it not only tells you what it does it tells you who does it so if you can't get a carpenter's bench to work this will tell you go see if you have a carpenter so there's a hint which one's run by blacksmiths which one runs by woodcutters the carpenter runs this one but the woodcutter runs the sawmill and he also goes out and chops the trees. So he's, he's spread out between those two jobs. But this guy right here will build a chest if you have barrel hoops and planks available. We'll build a barrel if you have barrel hoops and barrel staves available. We'll build a fishing pole if you have one plank. You can set limits. These are global limits throughout. So we'll, sell it. we'll say make sure that you build us two fishing rods. And we need two chests right off the bat and let's get we already have two buckets let's make a third bucket a yeah, fourth just to have them available and you can kind of go through your whole you know all the different benches will have the limit system for the items that the bench makes so let's grab another one of those there's talk of eventually maybe a crafting tab if you ever played King Under the Mountain, which by the way, this is that's where this game came from. It was King Under the Mountain, then it kind of went stagnant for a while, had a little drama, then it came back as Mountain Core. So the original one actually had, I believe, a crafting tab, and the limits were all built into that. So there's talk of maybe bringing that back or some you know, more workable version of that. <clears throat> we are morning. We are back to... Let's go to speed two now. We've got a lot of our stuff set up. We're at... Day three, though, we do need to think about trading, though I would love to get some of these things actually built. So, um, this guy needs, yeah, everything is available. One available, we have plenty of those, plenty of those, plenty of those. So we want to kick the priority up. Let's kick the priority up on the benches, but not so much on the pallets. So let's calm down the pallets so that we can get the benches built. Because there's only so many carpenters available and so many saws available on those carpenters to do the construction with. Um, Gardening-wise, we're putting in our hops. 
And can we tell? There doesn't seem to be a difference in the soil as to what is irrigated and what is not. And tilled earth versus tilled earth. So it doesn't say it's irrigated tilled earth. So those little bits of information I'm sure will be added eventually to the game right now. We're just thankful to have a game. <laughs> you know, there's there's so much more to do and it is all coming over the next years. Just like the beginning of Banished, the beginning of Rimworld. This is where we are on Mountain Core. Alright, so we are still mining. So once the mining is done, we'll get this little area finished. In fact, we yeah, this, we're almost there. We are delivering goods, though. Bringing our blocks and planks. And so more delivering is happening. Logs are coming over. So who needs logs? This one? Yeah. So click here. We need four logs and we need three planks. That's why I didn't want to tie up all the logs into the, the uh, stockpile just yet. <clears throat> Um, so the mining's almost finished, and that is the end of the mining. So those miners are going to be available for building and hauling and other jobs. Or if they have farming in them, they'll go up and help finish off all the plantings and get this done. So you are now a... You're idling. You're thinking about things. You're still idling. So you are a woodcutter and all the trees are down. You're a miner and all the mining is done. So you should drop into hauling. So are there no more hauling jobs? Hmm, let's think about that. You're drinking water. So did all the tools get hauled? That one got hauled. This one is in need of a saw and, a, and an axe. And that's being brought over right here. There's the saw. So little by little they're figuring it out. Don't want idlers. And you're idling. So, just watching this for a little bit. Idle right there. You cannot find anything else to do. Interesting. So let's talk about trading then. Trading is a big room. And lots of furniture added to it. Traders will come. Boy, on this map, where are they coming from? They're probably going to have to pop out of here. Eventually, we could set up a bridge to bring our traders in. Hmm. Let's think about that. I like this spot right here. Let's build, construct, build a bridge. You need it at least two wide. And something I haven't shown you, shown you yet. I keep forgetting all about it. It defaults to stone. We could make bridge with blocks from slate or apparently we only have slate blocks at the moment because we haven't created our own blocks because that comes out of here and it's not running yet so if we had multiple you know um shale and what did i say granite granite blocks already made then we could choose if that bridge is going to be made out of those stones or out of wood and right now we only have pine that's what we brought with us but we could choose what kind of wood what color of a bridge we want what color you know whether it's wood see the design there or stone the design there so pillars wood pillars look like that versus stone pillars carved out so a lot of a lot of variety um what do we have the most of products are where we're going to find our 42 planks and our 48 blocks so there's plenty of blocks yet and we're going to start making blocks really quick so let's use it out of blocks we have a lot of boulders to get processed so that is construction build bridge out of stone and at this point i'll take any stone that there's this quantity of it's three per square so we're going to be Oh, by three. So we got to be at least three wide to get a cart over it. So 21 times three. So 42. 21 times three. So two wide. So it, it, it gives you one row for free. <laughs> anyway, so maybe that's the same as two wide. It's probably half into that one and half into this one. Filling up three blocks, but it's actually two wide gives you 42 blocks are going into there we have 48 blocks available to us though we need some of those blocks for here we must have had like 64 and we've already used certain amounts already 
Yeah, but they're already assigned, so they're not going to be stolen from these benches. We'll leave this at a, as a lower priority, just a normal priority. They'll take care of these things first. But that gets another way for the traders to make their way in, either from here or from there. Now, where are they going to go? We have a lot of trees, which is kind of making it difficult to demonstrate how trading works. Let's put trading just pack it in over here normally I would say you know take your time clear this out make a nice little trading depot right off the bridge or you can even have it down over here you want it to be fairly near to where you make the products that you're gonna load up the trader with to sell in which case that's gonna come a lot up out of our carpenter shop we're gonna make a bunch of extra fishing poles and planes and rolling pins and wooden shields those are quick easy things to make with wood that could be loaded up into the trader to sell this guy's kind of in my way we don't need the wagons there's no use for them it's mostly just a nice thing to look at to kind of give you a sense of how we got here but there's no actual use for the wagons yet you can demolish it it will dump all of its goods on the ground including the metal which does rust so what I've heard is the wagons do keep these protected while they're outside until you have inside storage to put them away so <clears throat> there is that I'm gonna leave the wagon let's see if we can get the trader set up in this area right here I'm, I'm paused because we're gonna be getting too dark to be able to see it pretty soon but rooms the trader now at this point only certain things work in the trader but that's fine we'll go ahead and I'm going to keep it away from that just in case there's a conflict here and it causes a, an issue. The ledger table, <clears throat> this does not currently have an in-game effect, but it looks really good, so I like to use it. But it's not super important to get done in order to make trades happen. What is important, um, decorative banner to denote, denote the trading depot. I don't know if that's needed or not, but I like it, so I put it in. We can drop it right there. What is needed is the chest. And I always put at least two, just in case anything happens, any conflicts. There have been bugs regarding trading and, and the coins and different kinds of coins and chests accepting them or not accepting them. So I think all those bugs have been worked out by now, or at least you know, by the time the game released, that was one goal of getting, getting all that fixed. And I think it's fixed, but I'm going to put two in anyway, at least a space for two. And then you need a place for the, uh, uh, the merchants to park. They're going to come in with a wagon and a horse. So let's tell them it's okay to park here, here, and let's give them an, one more just in case three wagons show up. Then let's add some more space. Um, this is a building. This is a stockpile. So we can run them right up against each other, and they don't, they don't merge like stockpiles do. In fact, let's get rid of some of this stockpile and give us a little more room. So we'll get rid of that so that the input and output pallets can be over on this side. Uh, plus, let's do something like that. So import what we want to bring in from the trader. In other words, what they're going to sell to us. Don't need a lot. Uh, well, okay, let's... I'm going to do these down here. I'll tell you why. But let's cancel this guy. What you're asking for when they arrive or when they leave is what they're going to try to bring back next time the most of so there is an advantage to getting a lot of these in place so that you can essentially put in orders for next time if you made the mistake like i did on my last on my series planted all the corn and then it died before it was harvestable and you need more seeds you could set up a pallet requesting all the different kinds of seeds so in which case you need a variety um, we're not going to make that mistake and I don't want to spend so many planks here at the very beginning just on building these pallets so I'm going to cancel this row but leave space to add it later I do want to sell four things they're, they're quick and easy things to make that is exporting we're exporting I get these backwards sometimes with the trader because it seems reversed. On a sawmill, you're importing the logs and you're exporting the planks. But in this case, we are exporting what we want to sell. I think this is right. I do wish there was, in the case of the trader, a little footnote of sell and buy. That would get rid of the confusion a little bit. But let's put, well, I'm going to guess sell here and buy here. 
and we'll just see how that goes. This needs to be in place before they arrive. So let's kick the priority up on one of these chests and say two of those and two of those just to get us going and then maybe two of the parking spots and the flag. What does the flag take? Is that just a pole? Yeah, one board. So that's a quickie. And how long have I been recording? This is going to be, I wanted to do this in one episode, but it's probably going to be a long episode. But it takes a while to explain all of this. And you'll figure out a lot of this on your own. Just jump into the game and play it and have fun. But when things start to get frustrating or don't seem to work, then you know, pop into this and see if I've explained a workaround for a current issue that will be resolved soon or may even be resolved by the time you even watch this video. But all of that is laid out as far as a place to make stones, a place to make planks, a place to make the products that we need to fish, the products that we need to get this guy working, the trading, and we've laid out the trading. So let's kick the speed up a little bit and just let this build and see what we make of all this. I don't think there's a whole lot more that's absolutely necessary. We, eventually, you'll want to set up little individual bedrooms. They do get a bonus for having their own space. So you might go through and... Let's see, we'll set this on... Ah, two. I don't want to miss too much. Ah, three. Because I'm not going to be over there watching. But we could come through here and mine. And I won't do the first one, but we'll do a second one. So they won't actually come over and start mining. We can set up a nice hallway in here. And out of that, you know, set up a kitchen, set up a, oh, what have you, um, different workshops, different storages. We could come off and branch off into some little two by two bedrooms is what I tend to use with a way to get to each one. And they'll go through and, and mine all this out. And then you would build with the rooms a bedroom and fill in the four and put in a bed but you got to have linen to make the beds that's a problem um, we didn't actually build a kitchen we should do that so you can see how that works that actually is quite important I just don't have the time to mine it all out and do it the way that I would do it if I was playing this map so let's just stick it right here so you can see it um, let's go to two so I don't feel like I'm missing so much I'd love to see some of these buildings actually build there we go we did so remember kitchen we want to input import okay this is stone I'm thinking logs this is stone I want to import our rough stone boulder we could import our uncut gems this bench will handle both of those we would then output blocks we could also output the gems that come from those we could ask them to build a millstone out of those rough rough cut boulders we could ask them to make pipes out of them so we could set up either multiple export pallets and have these set up for each one of them or we could just you know for a moment swap it over from pipes to this and swap it back over to blocks again um, this also makes a ore crushing station which then takes the ore the metals and crushes it into the crushed ore so we would set that up over here I didn't for this one but that is something that you would do next in this area or just because it's listed here it doesn't mean it has to be in the same place you could set up another shop somewhere else that was more convenient because all the metals are coming out of this end of the map so let's set up the ore crushing over here something like that so you don't have to have one space but that is the basics of the stonemasons bench boulders coming in and blocks and we set up another one gems coming out I'm gonna leave it at this for right now you'll set up multiple ins and outs for all of these stations we've got the carpenters bench working normally you'd get this oh it is working okay so let's get these guys set up to finish off those guys and yeah this all got done okay so let's get all the inputs and outputs going we do have for this one and import so we're going to want logs coming in and we're getting the other one built right now let's get logs coming into there lots of logs piling into here so this guy is always loaded and ready to go we want out of here to be our uh that screen click on this guy and our planks 
and we also want our barrel staves. Now we could say, now the planks are the very most important, so we're the logs, let's get these guys. I like highest priority on all of my inputs. So they're constantly loaded and ready to go. This guy is well, there we go. Guys, bring over all the boulders and keep these filled at all times. The blocks are going to be important, especially since we're going to use 42 of them over there in the bridge. So we'll take that up to high as well. Let's get this guy going. And the bench itself has a priority set. So we could... Let's go to higher on that. So that this is a pretty important thing to be constantly coming over and doing some work over here. So is this guy. I mean, we may find that we're at a deficit and we really need to go to the highest to get this going but we'll go with that so inputs are highest and we definitely need planks going as fast as we can this guy makes the shields rolling pins for the kitchen the plane for carpentry work fishing rods really important the chest that we need for the trader buckets and barrels so let's get some inputs and outputs going for this guy. You are an import, so we're going to need planks. Another import, we're going to need barrel staves that were made right here. They get dropped off right there. Though if we have a stockpile that's calling for these, they'll drop to the stockpile. Then they'll go out to over there. And this one will eventually be the barrel hoops. All these right now are sitting on wagons. They haven't been unloaded yet. So we get these guys built real quick, but while they are doing that, let's work on that kitchen idea. So kitchen, and you need the kitchen and the feasting hall to make food work. This is important. So rooms, kitchen. We need a kitchen that can give us a water barrel, can give us a kitchen worktop so we can process foods, and a cauldron so we can cook soups. And I always do two cauldrons. Two cauldrons here, two cauldrons in the feasting hall. Feasting hall, now normally you'd be building this into your, your map here if you took the time to go and dig out your, your settlement. Feasting hall has the table and chairs that they need to sit down to eat. Because for some reason dwarves can't eat standing up. Fe feasting hall. <laughs> So we want a table. We want at least one chair. Yeah, we'll put a couple chairs in. And we need the cauldron. So we're going to process food. We're going to fill the cauldron with water. We're going to put food in the water. It's going to take three. So three carrots, three potatoes, or a carrot and a potato and a mushroom. Three things makes a soup. The cook then cooks the soup and then delivers the cauldron to the space in the feasting hall that's calling for a cauldron. We get two soups going, we can drop two over. Each cauldron is going to make 12 meals. So we get 12 meals out of, or 12 times that we can draw from this until it goes empty. It then goes into a, I'm gonna do this all right here so you can kinda of get a sense of it all. It then goes into a stockpile for that cauldron. And if you have a big product stockpile somewhere else, I've caught them. They carry it from, they finished the meal, they carried it all the way to the, the other stockpile, then they went and got it and brought it back to the kitchen. So I have learned to put a stockpile for products right next to the kitchen. That is calling for only cauldrons at highest priority so at that point once it's finished it'll get dropped off here then brought right back to the kitchen and there's much less walking to do let's get this priority up on you guys actually all of you this guy this guy and one of those so we can see this work the kitchen itself has a priority let's kick that one up because kitchen is really important the dining room or feasting hall unfortunately doesn't so what you'll find is once Though we have this set for a high priority, once they use it, it drops back to normal. So you got to babysit this a little bit. <clears throat> or you take everything down, everything else down to lowest and low, like I had said at the very beginning, so that when this defaults to normal, it is now actually the highest, and it gets done. Um, we have these going. All right. So do we? These are the inputs. I never put in exports. 
So you are the hoops. Ah, we didn't get this done. I was waiting for that mining to get done. Okay, so we're going to add some more tiles over here. Let's do that again. Add. So this is going to grow into this area. Give us more space. And I want some export palettes. And I want a variety. Boom, 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 boom. And yeah. And kick the priority up so we can get this done. So this quick 30 minute video that's turning into two hours doesn't turn into four hours long. <laughs> um, there's a lot to do to really make a good start. And really what I'm doing here is just the beginning. We've only just touched all of these rooms. There's so much more that you, know, you need to watch a full series to get exposure to all of it. But let's get going on these. And then am I done? Well, trading, well, we'll make the first objects that we need for trading to happen. That, namely the chest. Oh, we got these built. Okay. So one thing it's important for them to bring. So export. Say, so are we exporting our stuff or are we exporting their stuff? That's where the confusion comes in with the uh, trader. I wish there was a little tooltip or pop-up. So export. I think that is us exporting our goods by selling them to them. I'm going to go with that logic right now. We could export things that we're going to make. In this case, the quickie things that we're going to make will be, we'll say, rolling pins. It's, I believe it's alphabetical. Yeah. So if you can't find it, then just start... A, B, C, D, rolling pins, and we're going to get rid of something like, be careful with wood planes. They're easy to make, but you have to have one available to build those other benches. So you could accidentally sell off the last of your stuff to, uh, to continue building benches. Um, shields. We'll make wooden shields. So those are two things that we can make and not bankrupt ourselves if we accidentally sell them all and we want to import so what we're going to buy from them biggest most important thing is linen it's going to be a while before we grow our own hemp and then process it into linen so that we can build beds for our bedrooms so right there bed needs four lumber and one linen and once you get them into beds, they get a good night's sleep. Their happiness goes up. Happiness right now, we've still got our plus 40. It's going to last for a little bit longer, but we slept on the ground, negative 10. And when you get a good meal, a good soup in them, that also gives them some positives. There's quite a few positives and quite a few negatives in the game. Though it gives you a break at the beginning. So we want linen coming in. But linen's kind of expensive. It's one gold and three silvers, if I'm correct. So if we were to bring in, say, the hemp, so that we can process our own linen, that's a lot less. That might be four or five silvers, and, and that's all. So we could do that, and we could say, let's do the highest priority on the hemp, but we'll take the linen if we can afford it. A little lower priority. Let's concentrate on buying all of your hemp. So you can set up a whole series of these import and export pallets and really fine-tune everything you want to move in and out of your settlement once you start to realize what it is that you need. If you want to build the well, you don't have any any rope. You can go through here and products and down to R, planks and cauldrons. Yep, there's no R for rope here. So barrel staves. So we don't have any... I'm in the wrong one. Nope, that's it. Yeah, rope would be in here and products. So we don't have it available to build the building water power well the rope right there so we would need to buy it if we were so far away from water that a, a well would actually do us some good all right this is what i wanted to show you get these guys built we want to be making that chest we want to be making that fishing pole so we can start fishing we want to be making something to sell let's make the rolling pin and let's make the shield and for now, let's go ahead and kick all this up to a high priority. This guy too. Let's see if we can get some of these built before this episode is over so we can see it. It would be nice to see the chest drop into place and be ready for that first trade. Um, so there's a little picture of what it's calling for. That confuses you sometimes. It confuses me. I'm thinking there's a shield sitting there. Really, it's just a blueprint. It's a space waiting for a shield. There have been times when I have turned that off and then went to figure out where did they take that shield to and there really wasn't a shield to begin with so you are running 
and you are let's kick you up so we can see if somebody will walk over and actually build one they have been building it we've already made nine shale blocks so it's happening i just would love to see it we have built one throne are you going to you're not what are you guys actually doing you are removing pests from a barley plant and from a wheat plant so you guys are farmers you are eating rock bread ration so you're just going to stop and eat something and so you're going to do it over there now you're idle you got nothing to do let's give you something to do i need a stone mason why am I, there you are so you will get the job to go over and cut those blocks now what are you doing you are hauling iron hoops because we called for them right in here okay so you are now are you going to rethink your life you looking for work to do idle so someone else may have already gotten the command to go do that and they're on their way eating rock bread rations hauling hoops so you can kind of just follow these guys and see what their lives are like right now we're at the end of the day is kind of a bad example because they're they're reevaluating ah here we go they're reevaluating their their food and water situations this one's already got the order to make i'm guessing a fishing pole well a rolling pin so you're fulfilling that one we're gonna have a fishing pole here real soon or probably first thing tomorrow kick the speed up and let's see if we can get just a little more done before we call this thing finished yeah this was meant to be just a quick little tutorial but it's hard to turn this game off it really is i've got i think over 50 hours in it and it hasn't even been released on steam yet it's just and, I, and i'm busy doing a bunch of other projects right now at home so i don't really have time for gaming but it's hard to say no to this one this is a lot of fun this is like when RimWorld or banish first came out i don't I don't want to tell you how many hours I've got into both of those games. Okay, that went by way too fast, but we just built the chest and we just built the fishing pole. So, can I get someone to go fishing? Curious if I can pull that off. It's kind of hard to do. How many blacksmiths do we have? Only one, darn. Um, let's take your farmer off and give you a job that we can't do, like brewer. So now you can only blacksmith or fish. And let's put fish at the beginning. So we'll put your blacksmith there and we'll put your fish there. The game goes from left to right. It checks to see if there's a fishing job. If, if, oh, look at that. You were going to go fishing anyway. This tells you what they're doing. And sometimes they're animated. I actually had someone with a pickaxe just swinging back and forth. I'd never seen that before. You've got a fishing pole. My other series, we have pulled hair and teeth trying to get anybody to fish. This one, apparently that game advanced far enough to where there were a lot of conflicts under the hood. And something just caused them to not be able to do it. Now who was that person fishing? That is right. She's already there. Oh. So we have built two fishing poles then that's what's going on now there's a question I've never been able to get answered priorities along the water I've noticed these guys and I have wondered if those are fishing locations and apparently they are and apparently we have wiped out some because of our gardens normally they are well I've lost it they are every few spaces down the river but there's none right in here and I bet you the gardens did it but what if we did that and say that? Just out of curiosity to see if they go fishing in those spots more so than the other spots. But we are fishing. Oh, we've been throwing it on the ground because we have nowhere to put the fish. So along with the kitchen, <laughs> this never got done. We need to build a barrel. We've used them all. Okay, but because we built this building and it calls for a barrel. There goes our barrel. We need two barrels. Let's demolish this. Just this guy. I'd love to see it built, but it's not necessary, and I want that barrel back. We need a barrel here, but we also need a fish barrel, and we need a place to butcher. Normally, I'll put the butchering somewhere else. Like, yeah, we can go ahead and do it. Let's build the butchering right in here. So room, kitchen, we'll do that. In there, at highest priority, will be the butcher table and will be a fish barrel. 
So the fish will drop in to the fish barrel or we can drop them into a stockpile, food stockpile, which we'll call for all of it. Now normally by the time I've done this I've already built all the rooms into the mountain but for this purpose we'll skip that. We'll put fish right here. And you are a highest priority and the game should call for these fish to suddenly trigger, although it didn't trigger the highest priority like the stockpile is. Interesting that it did that. But let's tell them, okay guys, send, send a hauler out here and go get those fish. Thank you. So that is more of the fundamentals of how to make food work. We've got to have a kitchen. We've got to be able to process the food and cook it. We need water nearby. You don't want them going out to the river to keep filling up the uh, the kettles, or the, the cauldrons. We need to cook the soup. We need to deliver the soup to the feasting hall. And we need a place for them to sit down and eat the soup. So it gets you... Apparently we're low on blocks right now. Are all the blocks being called for? We can click on the blocks. Two of these are assigned to a shale chair. The rest of them are not assigned to anything, so they are available. So you, seven, the other seven of these nine since two are called to that chair the other seven are available we need to make one more and we'll have eight which is the minimum requirement then they'll bring all eight over and start building that a lot of words there but that's how things work in this game um so you are just throwing them on the ground and having a ball okay uh let's get Oh, good. We're already doing it. I was going to set you our idea to the highest priority. Let's get this built real quick. And I need barrels. So, we have our chest. It has not been delivered. Let's switch this over to barrels at highest priority and get those built. Do we have our hoops? We do. A barrel needs one hoop and one barrel stave. We'll, we'll call that a group of hoops and a group of of barrel staves which are over here and ready to go we just need somebody to do the job okay so to look at that otherwise are you are you just idle you're thinking about it you are a woodcutter and a stonemason and a miner for the sake of getting this thing done let's make you a carpenter and see if you will get triggered to do this job you are idle are you rethinking your life? I guess there's something else I should really show you too, which is another really confusing thing. You're drinking water. So eventually a carpenter is going to grab the hoops and staves and is going to build a barrel and drop it right there. That means they're going to have to be they're going to have to move this guy out, which means it's going to get delivered to here, which you are calling for it. Military is another confusing thing. And hunting. There used to be in King Under the Mountain a hunting profession I believe that caused some conflicts with military and how the game mechanics work so they figured it was easier just to make the military do the hunting military is a little confusing at first basically you can choose who will be your military let's do a quick hunt and just demonstrate this real fast again I, how long have I been going something like an hour and a half yeah but these are all important basics. Of all the buildings, the basics are the stones, the planks, the carpentry, so that we can get the trade and the fishing going. And then the kitchen and feasting hall and bedrooms. Those are the most important buildings. Plus, I guess these are officially considered buildings in the sense that they are a room, a farming room, a plot. But that's another building. So those are the core important issues to deal with there there's a bridge shows you how that works we can anything without any iron in it iron will rust now these all have iron in it but i guess just to show it to you we could demolish this all this will get scattered on the ground this will give back some planks some some hoops from the wheels and some staves I, i'm guessing or at least the hoops and you would have stockpiles set up to haul all that in by the time you're tearing these guys apart. But you can demolish the wagons and get them off, off the map and get all the, the, mer the, the, the stuff inside hauled in. But we don't have a bridge, so we can't get over there. Okay, what is over here? Ooh, okay, that maybe changes some things. That, 
there we go. We could hunt you. I don't know what a vixen is. It kind of looks like a little fox, but uh, we'll we'll go with that. Don't say that. I'm not saying that I really want to go hunt that little fox, but I want to show you how hunting and or military works. What I have found, <clears throat> these guys. Let's just grab one right now. You are military. We're going to call you Squad One. That's the the default. You can type in wherever you want. Though there's only so many spaces, ten or twelve spaces. So don't get too crazy with the name. Squad One. That's who you are. We can set your weapon. And when I first did this, I didn't know what that was. I mean, we have one axe or zero axe or or how good the axe is or what does that mean? Turns out these are skill levels, just like we've seen in farming and fishing and, and stonemasoning and all those. This person, Astra, is at a level 30 for brawling. She is a novice brawler, the, whereas she is a neophyte pickaxe woman <laughs> or a hammer i'm not sure what the game would call it but uh an an axe woman or a yeah anyway in this case since we are not good at any of the weapons we would use our fists as our weapon we don't have any shields made we don't have any armor made so this basically is our military right now with fists and for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to set everybody over to squad one because they are so unskilled at fighting that sending out one or two to take out an enemy either means one or two are going to die or one or two are going to take days and days and days to get the job done. So while they don't have any skills, send them all out to go do whatever it is. So now that we have our settlers designated as military, we are now controlled, and we can see it right here, this is our military, versus our settlers, which aren't here anymore. We now control them by the military tab. Now, if you were to maintain this, you would then set up a barracks and barracks is for the military we'll set up a little blocks right here we they will not sleep in their beds anymore they are not civilians anymore they will sleep in the barracks so you set up some beds in the barracks you can set up training dummies they'll take their whatever their their weapon is their pickaxe or or kitchen knife whatever the, is available at the at that point of the game when you're dealing with this and they will whack at this thing all day long when they're not hunting or, or going after enemies or if you get the the armory up and going where you're making metal weapons you can start making um, uh, bows and arrows or you can make cross bows and bolts You've got a place to store your armor. You've got a place to store your weapons that can all go inside of the barracks. We're not going to deal with that right now. That's just to give you a sense of what's going on. But I guess I do have to manually delete these. Okay. So we now have seven warriors who don't really know what they're doing. They are controlled here. We can go to them. Train civilians. Okay, I guess that was the way of saying they were brawlers at that point. But we can give them orders. I usually stick with grid narrow, keeps them bunched up so they can all attack the same enemy easier. But you've got lots of different tactics to use. And um, back to that. You can set their orders. These guys are these guys. So train, guard, attack, cancel, and retreat. So we can tell them to train all day. We can tell them to guard a certain area. I haven't used that before, so I'm, I can't tell you exactly how that works. We can tell them to attack an object or an item or an entity like that vixen. Or like the giant spiders that are going to come out of the next cave that you open up. Or the undead dwarves that will kick your butt coming after you if you open up a big cave and there's a bunch of undead dwarves way in the back leave them there build a wall put a door in that wall and seal it off until you got some trained uh, military and at the first year you're not going to have any trained military your second year first or well second or third day of spring you've got the chance of immigration and last in in, in the other series that i'm doing we had seven new dwarves show up so we had 14 
out of those 14, we can then go through and, and work through all their skills again, get rid of all of the little add-ins that we did to get some extra farmers, but they really weren't as good of farmers as if they had come with that skill. So set them all back to the originals, then you can see the new balance of what you have and all the jobs, and you can rebalance everything. And then the ones that are the, the most duplicative, ones that that you have, if you have too many farmers and too many woodcutters or miners, you can take those and make them military. Set up your barracks and get them training all day, and then you can get some decent, you know, warriors out of that. But right now, we don't have anybody that really knows what they're doing. <clears throat> but we could take the ones that we have and tell them to go attack this guy. Just as an example to show you how it works. Elephants are tough, and they're going to stomp you. And I did send my guys after some wild boars and the wild boar took one swipe at one of us and took our health bar all the way down to almost zero in one swipe you need armor on if you're going to take on a wild boar so don't even try but we have another vixen over there so let's set up two of them military attack vixen we got to kind of go across you can't hunt your horses so it's not going to work but that gives us two items two animals to go after right now we've got dwarves starting to show up but if we hit military then we will light up in blue and enemies will light up in red so we can see it a little bit better but this guy's really big which by the way can be altered options ui i'm thinking if i take this all the way down let's see if that works what do i do oh nope it was already set up the right way give us some time Hello, there it goes. That's as small as it's going to get. Okay, so pull out of that. And military. Or if you don't do anything, the ones that are actually engaged will light up. So we'll just do it that way. But there's more coming. And they're not very skilled, so they're going to do a lot of dancing around. And, and these guys are much faster than we are. And we are fighting with our fists. So don't expect anything glorious to come out of these first battles. This, is, this one says, I am out of here. Uh-uh. And we're getting to where we want to sleep now. And we're getting late. And they're hungry. And so you kind of want to make this happen first thing in the morning. Not at the end of the day like I did, just to give you an example. But that's how you set up your military. You know, you go to your settlers and then switch them over. I'm going to go back to military and switch them back. They'll go back to their original skills. Now, when they're military, there's no happiness being brought into it. So that they will fight even if they're in a really bad mood. They will still defend you. So once you go back, you go back to whatever their happiness was set up at. But I can't keep the military right now because I don't have a place for them to sleep. And they're all hungry and they're ready to go to bed. They're going to cancel all those orders. They're, they're fleeing from combat because this is still marked as, and they're still trying to attack it. So let's turn off that attack order, and all of the animals will go back to normal. You guys are all going to go to sleep. So that kind of gives you a sense of how the game runs. We didn't get to see the trader. Um, basically, the wagons will pull in, and... The trader will walk over and say, I want that rolling pin. They'll pick it up. They'll put it in their wagon. They'll bring the, I don't know, two or three silver, and they'll drop it off into the uh, chest. <clears throat> Someone will take that shield, drop it off in their wagon, drop some more coins in the chest. When there's enough coins in the chest to pay for what you're looking for, then they'll grab it from the wagon, drop it off there, then take the coins back out of the chest. So it, it kind of runs itself once you figure out the inputs and outputs then it, it, it works pretty well. So what else can I tell you about this game that will save you a bunch of headaches trying to figure out those little nuances that once you've done it, it makes sense. But until you've been exposed to it, you're like, what? Um, the big thing is right here. Get your cauldron set up in both places. Though we didn't, we didn't get a chance. Let's, can I do that real quick? Can you guys just give me a mushroom? Um, there. Can somebody pick a mushroom? We've got fish. We've got, we haven't got the butcher's table built. That would have made fish fillets, which then would have made this work. Yeah, that is a fish being brought in and dropped into our food pile. So if we had the butcher's table going, we could see them butcher it and then 
What are you? Someone brought the fish barrel over. Oh, good. So are we making barrels now? We are... Nope, the chest is still there. So that was one barrel that was... The barrel that was in this building. that The ledger table, which has a barrel as part of its um, ingredients, we'll call it. Otherwise, I think I need to turn this off. Uh, you do need the table and the chairs in order to let them sit down to grab a meal then sit down and eat so that is part of the formula that has to be there you are just idling yeah so i think i'm going to call this one done leave me any questions in the uh, comment section of, of if you get to a point where you don't know what to do and i'll try to answer them for you or some of the other viewers who are watching this later leave tips is anything i got wrong yeah, leave it in the comment section. It'll help others who watch this video later. And uh, you guys can answer your own questions back and forth in the comment section too. That's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to call this one done. This has been Mountain Core, and I'm Noble Rambler, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.